Ford Super Duty uh, 6R140 transmission, torque shift, transmission range sensor replacement. Okay. First thing I'm going to do here is pull the transmission dipstick out. This particular variety of truck is a diesel 6.7. This transmission was also used on a variety of other Super Duty trucks. What do we have here? We're going to lay down a piece of cardboard underneath the truck to slide up under. There should be a 13 millimeter drain plug on the pan. I do have a high capacity drain pan there. Here's my 13 millimeter socket and I have an impact driver with an 8 millimeter socket on it as well. It does appear that certain models do not have a drain plug on the pan, but that's okay. Let me show you how to go about this. With the pan underneath the bottom of the transmission, I'm going to start with taking the rear uh, mounting bolts off for the pan, slowly work my way forward each side, take one off here and here and here and here and so on, and eventually the pan is going to start drizzling out of the back. At that point, I'm going to keep going, and uh, there's going to be a controlled drain. Rather than take the whole pan off at once and make a giant mess, I'm just going to control the drain by lowering the back of the pan down. I am going to go ahead and uh, let that drain for about an hour. That's what it looks like. Just took the back bolts off and it's oozing out. All right, boys, when you get the pan off, you're going to be seeing the filter here. It is fastened on with two 8mm bolts, one here and one here. Okay. All right, I do have that one loosened. That is the length of the bolt that goes here. All right, I've got that one loose. There you go. All right, let's see if we can get this sucker on out of here. There is another. There we go. That's the length of that one. And that is the passenger side of the transmission there, where the cooler lines come in. All right, I'm going to have to pull it out of the pump up here. Oh, there we go. Make sure that orange seal came off with it. And I am going to go ahead and pull the uh, gasket off of here. It is reusable, however, if you've got a lot of miles on it or you just want to replace it, it's not a bad idea to do that. All right, that leaves us with the meat and biscuits here, boys. I do have an interior trim tool right here, and I'm going to go ahead and pop this shifter cable off, just like that. And with that off, I'm going to go ahead and get it in the low position, which is going to be counterclockwise all the way. All right. In order to remove this uh, rod here, you're going to want to pull it off right here. You see the uh, little spring retainer there? You just pop it past there, slide it on out. And if it helps, uh, put this in the same orientation it came off with on the ground. At this point, I am going to go ahead and disconnect the range sensor, neutral safety switch, whatever you want to call it. There's a little release tab on the side you, you push in. It sometimes does help to push up on the connector, push in on the release, and pull it on out. All right, boys, you see this uh, drift pin right here? You do have to punch it all the way through to get the uh, range sensor out. So I'm going to go ahead and I found a screwdriver that is the same diameter as the hole on the range sensor there. So that's going to fit inside as I punch that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I do have that as well as a hammer. All right, boys, it is about to come out. Just a few more taps left. And there we go. She's out. The screwdriver's all the way through, as you can see, and it is the same size as that hole. So there you go. That's what you need to do there. And if you look up here, there's a detent spring. I'm going to go ahead and loosen, but not remove this bolt. There we go. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and slide this shaft out right here. Now, I do still have this lever on it, just so you know. I'm going to support this just in case it wants to fall, but uh, here we go. There's that. Set that down, and at this point, the rod that you're looking at right here does go on to this mechanism on the range sensor, and you're going to want to align up here the, the uh, little teeth on this rod with the openings on the range sensor detent arm itself. And once you do that, that this arm will slide right out, and you'll be able to take the range sensor out. There we go. You see the little uh, provisions there for the rod here to go through? All right. And by the way, the new range sensor does come with a new retaining clip, so if you bend or damage yours, don't worry. And also, the spring on, or the retaining clip on here on the new sensor is not in this notch here. So once you pop the arm in later on in the video, you're going to need to push this back and it'll pop into that hole on the new sensor. All right. All right, guys. Going back in with the new one here. 
Just a key note here. You see this little hole on the manual rod here, the linkage rod? All right, you're gonna have to match that up with the hole on the range sensor because when you put the drift pin back in, it needs to go through that hole. So what I'm gonna do here is have my cameraman watch that when I'm installing this in a few minutes. And I just wanted to point that out. Okay. I got the range sensor slid up in there. And as, as you can see here, I got that little keyway lined up and I push that rod through. That's how it goes above the uh, portion of the range sensor here. It goes on top. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slide this mofo on in here. And once again, line up this hole with the hole on the range sensor. It does help having another person if possible. If not, you can just go at that angle and try to get the holes lined up on there. You see that right there? That's what you gotta line up. And then you can punch that drift pin back in. This point before I put that pin in, I did go ahead and tighten down on that detent lever, or excuse me, detent spring there. Do make sure that the, on the rear of the spring that, that it pops into that little hole in the case there. Cameraman, would you pull away the light a little bit? Yeah. yeah, you see that little hole in the case? Just needs to locate right in there. And then you can come up here on the front and just double check that the detent spring is on that portion of the range sensor properly. There you go, it's right about in the center there. That's gonna work fine. You see how one side of the drift pin is a little smaller than the other on the right here? You need to put that side up. All right, I do have that drift pin in there far enough to where when, I, when the uh, lever rotates here, it's not gonna rub on the casing or the valve body. There we go. Now at this point, I am gonna have to pop the shifter cable back off of here and rotate this back to the low position so I can have better access to put that little uh, rod back in. I am gonna go ahead and put that rod in here. Whoopsie, there we go. And now pop it into that other location there. And just a little reminder on your new sensor, you need to pull this down till it clicks. You see, and it'll uh, pop into that hole right there. See, connect this up here. There we go. And now without starting the engine, we're gonna turn the key on, run it through the gears, make sure they all light up properly. Don't forget the manual. <laughs> Don't forget the uh, shifter cable. Do take note um, that the, you see this notch right here on the range sensor. There is an area on the uh, detent spring up in here. This little notch here does slide into a pr the provision on the detent spring when you go in there. All right, there's an angle. You see right up in there. You can see it. And I'm able to just loosen the detent spring back up, move it on over until it's popped in because I'll be honest with you, I forgot to put that in. <laughs> All right, boys, that pretty much wraps it up here. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments. Here's another check to make sure that you got that uh, detent thing lined up with the range sensor. The range sensor should not move around and go up top and make sure it runs through all the gears and lights up on the screen. And also make sure that your manual rod and shift uh, cable here are lined up properly. If, if by any chance it's not like dead on with the dimple that it pops onto, you might need to adjust the cable in that point. You shouldn't need to in theory because it's the exact same part you're putting in. But uh, if you do, uh, just pop the cable apart, move this around, pop it onto the knob on this lever here, put it together, and then put the two halves of the thing together on the shifter cable that you took apart to loosen it. And uh, if you need any more help on that, let me know. Or you can look up another video on how to adjust a shifter cable on a uh, 6R140. All right, guys, have yourselves a great day. Thanks for watching. Get your pan back on and fill it up. And you're good. Bye-bye.